In the sepia-tinged corridors of television history, there exists a hidden chamber where memories of first encounters with beloved shows are eternally preserved. Imagine, for a moment, the flicker of anticipation as you settled into your cozy armchair, your surroundings bathed in the soft glow of a bygone era. It was a time when stories were spun without the digital dazzle of today, a time when characters and plotlines held you captive through sheer storytelling prowess. And then, there it was, the year 1971 unfolded before you, wrapped in the opening credits of canon. The television screen seemed larger, the room quieter, as if all senses converged to savor this inaugural moment. Perhaps you recall the nod of curiosity, the intriguing premise of a rotund detective navigating the labyrinth of crime. Or maybe it was the resonance of that unforgettable theme tune, each note playing in harmony with your own pulse of excitement. As the episodes wove their tales, you were transported into Frank Cannon's world, a world where grit and intellect melded into a formidable force. The screen held your gaze, but it was the narrative that ensnared your thoughts, leaving you yearning for more. A blend of mystery, suspense, and the indomitable human spirit painted stories that were not merely watched, but experienced. And now, as we cast our gaze back into the vault of trivia, prepare to journey deeper into the show's tapestry. These random facts will peel back the layers, revealing the nuances that made canon an indelible mark in the annals of television. From behind-the-scenes anecdotes to the show's cultural impact, each factoid adds a brushstroke to the canvas of understanding. So, fellow traveler through time, as we embark on this expedition of knowledge, remember to savor the echoes of your first encounter with canon. Reflect on those moments when a show was more than just entertainment. It was a gateway to a world of imagination, a tapestry woven by the master storytellers of yore. And now, without further ado, let the revelation of random facts commence. These fascinating glimpses will illuminate the path that canon blazed, forever leaving its mark on television history. Unveiling the enigma of canon, a tale of tragedy and intrigue in the realm of classic television, the 1971 series canon emerges as an enigmatic masterpiece, with its gripping narratives and unforgettable characters. At the heart of this detective drama lies the compelling evolution of its titular character, Frank Cannon, portrayed by the remarkable William Conrad. The show's first season offers a distinct storytelling quirk. The initial 25 episodes treated viewers to a tantalizing glimpse of what awaited them via a short scene before the opening credits. A cinematic appetizer, if you will, before the main course. Frank Cannon's origin story is equally riveting. A former police officer, Cannon's path veers sharply after personal tragedy strikes, the heart-wrenching loss of his wife and infant son in a devastating car accident. This heartbreak propels him into the realm of private investigation, where he becomes a formidable force, solving intricate cases with a determination fueled by his own sorrow. Strikingly, this poignant premise mirrors a real-life parallel, echoing the experiences of Raymond Burr. The actor, who incidentally played Cannon, purportedly wove a tale of familial loss to shield his authentic self, a narrative that resonated deeply with the character he portrayed. Yet, amidst the intrigue and suspense, a curious detail punctuates the series. Cannon's signature Lincoln, a symbol of his indomitable spirit, is parked with an almost audacious vulnerability. Windows down, doors unlocked, an open invitation, perhaps, to the adversaries he relentlessly pursues. This audacious habit exposes his prized automobile, and notably, his car phone, to acts of wanton vandalism by the very villains he thwarts. As we delve into the compelling universe of canon, these intricacies deepen our appreciation for its narrative prowess. A television gem that defies conventions, it weaves reality and fiction into a tapestry of mystery, ultimately leaving an indelible mark on the annals of television history. In 1972, a spin-off animated series titled Young Cannon seemed poised to take flight from the hit TV show Cannon. The brainchild of Lou Shamer, the visionary behind Filmation Studios, the spin-off aimed to inject new life into the crime drama's universe. The rights were secured from Quinn Martin, the show's creator. However, despite initial promise, the animation never saw the light of day, as CBS, under Fred Silverman's leadership, ultimately passed on the concept. Thus, the ambitions of young canon remained unrealized, a footnote in the annals of unfulfilled television potential. 
Beyond the intricacies of spin-offs, Canon boasted an intriguing connection to Viacom Enterprises, its steadfast distributor. An intriguing coincidence emerged, as Viacom had once held the US TV rights to a range of films produced by Canon Films. This convergence of names created a thread weaving the show into the broader tapestry of entertainment industry dealings. The echoes of synergy, whether intentional or not, became a subtle undercurrent beneath the show's television narrative. Viacom, not content with its role as a distributor, later embarked on a new venture starring the familiar face of William Conrad who had left an indelible mark as the titular character in canon. The resultant show, Jake and the Fat Man, enjoyed a five-season run, solidifying Conrad's place as a television mainstay. The continuity of talent and collaboration between Viacom and Conrad marked a trajectory that ventured beyond the world of canon, yet carried forward the spirit of their prior partnership. As the credits rolled on canon, its legacy extended far beyond its crime-solving narrative. From the shelved ambitions of young canon to the intricate connections with Viacom Enterprises and the subsequent chapter of Jake and the Fat Man, the show's impact was palpable and enduring. Even as time marches on, the reverberations of these television undertakings continue to resonate in unexpected ways, a testament to the complex and interconnected nature of the industry. The enigmatic Blue Coupe de Ville, unveiling the quirks of 1971 TV series canon and the sprawling landscape of 1971 television, where detectives and intrigue dominated screens across the nation, one series stood out not just for its gripping plots, but for the subtle, enigmatic touches that have intrigued viewers for decades. Canon, the iconic detective drama, featured an unusual but ever-present background element, a blue Cadillac Coupe de Ville with a distinct white top. Harped strategically in various scenes, this automobile cameo became as familiar as Cannon's trench coat. The blue coupe de ville, a symbol of style and luxury of its era, occupied a unique spot in Cannon's visual narrative. Whether nestled beside Cannon's vehicle or discreetly positioned near a home's driveway, or even subtly adorning the side of a street in a park scene, the Cadillac was more than just a propit, was a recurring character in its own right, sparking conversations and fan theories. But beyond the mystique of the blue coupe de ville lies another curiosity the obscure yet intriguing phone number 476-3359. This seemingly innocuous string of digits was, in fact, Cannon's personal phone number in the series. A detail often overshadowed by the drama's main plot lines, this choice of a phone number offered an unexpected glimpse into the character's fictional life, reflecting a level of detail that elevated Cannon beyond its contemporaries. Notably, Cannon embarked on its television journey with a pilot episode in March of 1971. This two-hour introduction set the tone for the series, but deviated from the norm. The pilot boasted distinct opening graphics, omitting the customary cast role and title voiceover. Instead, viewers were treated to a departure from the typical, inviting them to immerse themselves in the narrative without preconceived notions. As viewers tuned into Cannon, they were met with both the familiar, and the unexpected a blue Cadillac with a personality of its own, an unassuming phone number that hinted at hidden facets of the character, and a pilot that dared to break the mold. These intriguing elements added depth to the series, etching canon into the annals of television history for more than just its detective tales. In the sprawling world of 1,971 seconds television landscape, canon left an indelible mark, offering more than mere entertainment. It teased the imagination, inviting viewers to unravel the mysteries within and beyond its episodes. The enigmatic Blue Coupe de Ville, the puzzling phone number, and the unconventional pilot all contributed to the allure of canon, making it a timeless classic that continues to captivate audiences to this day. And so, the next time you find yourself engrossed in an episode of canon, keep an eye out for that blue Cadillac because in this world of intrigue, even the background has stories to tell. Unveiling the intriguing persona of Frank Cannon, a closer look at Cannon TV series in the early 1970s. Television screens across the nation were graced by the formidable presence of Frank Cannon, the titular character of the hit detective series Cannon. Portrayed by the talented William Conrad, Cannon was a man of both intellect and idiosyncrasies, and one subtle yet remarkable aspect of his character was often played out in the show's score. 
Throughout the series, keen-eared viewers might have noticed a recurring musical theme accompanying Cannon's appearances. Some have speculated that this low, resonant melody, often carried by a wind instrument, possibly the tuba, was a deliberate leitmotif. A nod to Cannon's imposing rotund frame, the melody seemed to mirror his deliberate, unhurried movements. This musical choice, although subtle, became an unmistakable reference to the detective's physicality, underlining his methodical approach to solving crimes. Further adding to the show's attention to detail was the inclusion of a phone in Cannon's car, a mobile number etched into viewers' memories, 213-191-9221. This numeric touch provided an early glimpse into the integration of technology into television narratives, a glimpse that would only grow more pronounced in years to come. But beyond these sonic and technological quirks, the character of Frank Cannon held another captivating detail. He was a pipe smoker, a trait shared by his real-life counterpart, William Conrad. In the series' initial seasons, the detective was frequently seen with a pipe an accessory that lent an air of sophistication to his investigative pursuits. Interestingly, this habit waned over the show's run, appearing sporadically in later seasons before ultimately fading away. It's a detail that invites speculation about character evolution and behind-the-scenes decisions, offering fans a chance to delve into the show's creative choices. As we unravel the layers of canon, we find a series that paid heed to both the nuances of its character's persona and the subtle currents of storytelling. With its musical motifs, phone digits, and smoking habits, the show hinted at the multidimensionality of its protagonist. From the striking visuals to the captivating auditory cues, Cannon showcased how every element can contribute to the creation of an enduring television icon. In the end, Cannon proves to be a testament to the era's television ingenuity, where seemingly minor details could leave a lasting impact on audiences and spark discussions that would endure for decades. A series that merged character and craft, it stood as a harbinger of the television landscape we know today. As we bid adieu to the timeless gem that is the 1971 TV series Cannon, we're left with more than just fading credits on a screen. We're left with a legacy, that has woven itself into the fabric of our entertainment history. Just as the titular character Frank Cannon pursued justice with an unwavering determination, so too did this show capture our hearts with its gripping narratives and charismatic performances. As you reflect on your personal journey with Cannon, perhaps you find yourself transported to a different era, where the clatter of typewriters and the hum of rotary phones were the soundtrack to a world where private investigators held a unique mystique. Was it Cannon's unassuming demeanor that resonated with you, or perhaps the thrill of each case that left you on the edge of your seat? In a time where TV series come and go, Cannon remains a testament to the power of storytelling and the ability to forge connections that stand the test of time. Your memories, thoughts, and emotions associated with this series are as unique as the cases Frank Cannon took on. We invite you to share those moments that have stayed with you, the scenes that made you smile or gasp, and the characters you couldn't help but root for. So, whether you're reminiscing about Cannon's distinctive car, his signature trench coat, or the camaraderie that developed between him and his clients, your perspective adds another layer to the rich tapestry of Cannon. In a world of ever-evolving entertainment, it's the threads of shows like these that bind us across generations, inviting us to revisit, relive, and rediscover the magic they brought into our lives. Thank you for taking this journey down memory lane, for sharing your thoughts, and for keeping the spirit of canon alive. Your connection to this series is a testament to its enduring impact, and your stories make the legacy even richer. Until we cross paths again, keep the memories alive, and let the echoes of canon continue to resonate in your heart. Warm regards.